Um, Dave, Dave Dove here with the um, last video of 2016. Um, seasonal video, well, in the, uh, here with a neighbour. Uh, so I uh, hope everybody's um, having a good Christmas. Um, and a lot of stuff to show. Uh, it's kind of a big backlog of... Um, of stuff um, which has built up over the last couple of months um, I just start off just getting out of the way um, a selection of CD um, thrift and flea market finds which I've made over the last couple of months uh, starting off with a very seasonal one for the for the time that's in it uh, Christmas in the heart Bob Dylan um, yeah Old Grumbling Bob does uh, this Christmas thing. Um, Marissa Nadler, um, Ballads of Living and Dying. This is a kind of um, kind of goth folk thing. Um, kind of interesting. Um, this is some kind of Afro um, Brazilian drumming kind of thing uh, that I picked up. Um, some time ago, um, Radio Dread uh, dub covers of Radiohead songs, um, and the Endless River, Pink Floyd. I knew this would turn up eventually in a in a charity shop. Um, this is so the CD, uh, better album than I expected it to be, uh, to be honest. But um, you know, it's it's very reminiscent of the endless river which isn't surprising really you know seeing as it's take you know derived from outtakes from the endless river but um glad to have it in my collection anyway uh schoenberg a bit of um 20th century classical um okay hawkwind live and rare and uh, some kind of budget label release uh, it doesn't state when these record when these recordings were made, but there's some good stuff in there, all live, um, all their best stuff live, basically. Um, Thurston Moore, Psychic, um, album of his from 1995. Um, Slow Dive, um, their final album, Pygmalion. I love this album. Superb. Um, kind of electronic shoegaze kind of thing mm, Michael Rother um, Kraut Rock -y, blah, blah, blah. yeah Michael Rother of Noi uh, this is a compilation CD um, oops sorry uh, with this um, interesting kind of OB strip kind of thing here um, yeah so, so some very decent stuff here from his first I think three or so um, uh, solo albums, I think. Uh, Bums, the Happy Mondays. Um, a, I won't show the inner. The, the, there's a very, very dodgy picture uh, in that um, inner, so I won't show it. Um, Chet Baker, uh, Chet Baker sings and plays with sextet, quartet, and orchestra. Um, Elliot Smith's final album. Um, from a basement on a hill, uh, which I think was a two thousand and three. I think two thousand and four, maybe released just after his death. John Tavener, uh, John Tavener. I've been getting quite a bit into his stuff quite a lot lately. Um, English composer, kind of an English Arvo part. Um, this is Eternity Sunrise. Um, uh, very nice indeed. And this is. A band called Shik Shik Shikahara, I think. Album is called Anduni. This is a kind of weird, kind of tribal drumming, kind of a neo folk industrial kind of thing. Um, yeah, interesting. Um, all of those CDs were either charity shop. Oh yeah, and there's another one, um, which I found today. The Kinks. Um, the Kinks, the Ultimate Collection, a double CD. Um, uh, also, Cassette, Tangerine Dream, uh, Underwater Sunlight. Um, I think the vinyl was shown recently by um, 
Karm. Oh, and this is something I picked up as well today. Um, Mark Boland, T-Rex, 20th Century Superstar. Uh, I found this at a charity shop. Uh, it was eight. It was priced at eight euros, which is generally a bit higher than what you'd expect to get in kind of you know thrift or charity shops. But this is definitely well worth it. Uh, this is a um, four disc box set which came out in two thousand and two on I think Universal and um, covers all, it covers his entire career basically, including rare and um, up to then previously unreleased stuff. So uh, also a booklet as well. Um, yeah, it's eight euros, but I checked this up online. This this goes for fairly big money online, so um, it was definitely well worth um, eight euros. Okay, I'm going to move on to the vinyl because uh, we're already into five minutes. Um, this is a Discogs purchase, uh, something that was on my long want list for a long time. Um, I was able to buy this because of another record which I sold online, so um, that allowed me to pull the trigger on this. So that is Henry Cow's debut album, Henry Cow Legend, uh, the first album by this um, legendary um, Canterbury uh, band. Um, so this is an original UK pressing on Virgin, and you'll notice it has the the original black and white uh, Virgin labels there. Uh, absolutely superb copy and this is just an amazing album from start to finish it's just an absolute classic um, release in that Canter whole Canterbury um, Canterbury jazz prog thing um, one that was on my want list for a long time and I know that there's, there's three albums with this with kind of similar uh, cover design um, I think one is red and one is black, I think, but uh, this is the first one, so that's uh, that's off my want list now. Uh, very pleased to pick that up. Um, absolutely amazing, amazing album. If um, you know, if you're a fan of um, uh, the Canterbury uh, kind of Canterbury progressive scene, um, I mentioned it. I think it was my last video. I went to a record fair, um, made some nice finds. Uh, that was up in Limerick where I met up with Ben Costello. Uh, now the same seller who I bought the bought some of the stuff off that time, he came down to another record for fair down here in Cork a few weeks back, and I managed to pick up some again some very nice stuff from him. Uh, this I actually incredibly, and, and I've mentioned this before, but this, this seller, this was in his bargain section, priced at five euros, and really I couldn't believe it, but um. Sandy Denny. Uh, this is a this is an album which you, which was recorded in 1967, but not released until 1970. It was recorded for the Saga label, which is basically a kind of a budget label. Uh, you see it on here a lot. Uh, primarily, they they primarily released um, a lot of classical and kind of jazz as well to a to a lesser extent, but. Um, yeah, this was recorded specifically for the label in 67 and I presume it was shelved for some reason but then once she became successful with um, um you know more high profile with um Fairport Convention this was released um uh by Saga so it's basically it's her covering um a lot of folk standards and um, there's um uh, this train 310 to Yuma um yeah, absolutely. Her voice really is absolutely to the fore on this album. Um, it, it's quite a rare album, actually. Um, it, it's actually the full title is um, it's called it's called it's it's Sandy Denny. I, I think it's on the labels. It's not actually on the cover, but um, it's actually quite hard to find. And um, I was quite really quite surprised that he, he had it in his bargain section, but um, but he did. So I grabbed it. Um, um, and I've got more, oh no, I've got two other albums off them. Um, now the other one, I previously got uh, White Noise 3 off him, which I showed a few videos back. Now, I didn't know he actually had this, the next one, he actually had it, but I, I must have missed it. But uh, I just came across it when I was browsing, 
when, it, when, when I'm out of, when I'm last. So this is White Noise 2 by, um, I, I explained about this guy before, um, David Vorhaus, who was, um, uh, he originally released an album called, um, uh, I think it was called, was it called Electric Storm uh, in 1969, which um, um, Julia Derbyshire of um, the BBC Radiophonic Workshop, uh, she wasn't involved in this one, but um, uh, this is called Con White Noise 2 Concerto for Synthesizer by David Vorhaus. Uh, it's part three. Now, I, I picked up part three um, a few weeks ago. Now, th this is part two. Uh, this was released in 1975. Again, on the Virgin label. And uh, I was quite pleased to see that it has that um, Virgin inner sleeve, um, the black inner sleeve. It's the first time I've actually come across that inner sleeve in the wild. But um, again, like White Noise 3, this is... Um, well, it's spacey kind of synthesizer as, as the title of this one says it's kind of aiming more at a kind of modern classical field um i wouldn't quite say it's as good as white noise 3 or the or the original white noise white noise 1 but um very pleased to pick this up um he actually had it all along he had it the, the when i met him the, the previous time but i obviously missed it but um so, um, where are we? Um, also, yeah, he had some kind of dance music, uh, dance music section where everything was priced at two euros. Uh, I had a flick through it. Um, I made one pickup, which actually for, for two euros was quite a bargain because this is a quadruple album. Yeah, so it's, uh, there's four discs in this. It's basically a box set. Um, it, it, it's a label called Compost, and this is called Compost 100, a uh, German uh, electronic music label. Um, this was released in 2001. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the acts on this would probably fall under the kind of acid jazz or new jazz kind of label. Um, um, so, yeah, so it's, it's kind of a, it's a box set, and it also has um, a lot of the four, four discs, yes. Count them one, two, three, four. There's also a giant um, fold out poster. Uh, I'm not going to fold it out because it, it's absolutely huge and um, I, I don't want to take up too much time because there's a lot of stuff to show. But um, yeah, um, superb um, bargain there for um, for just two euros. Um, okay, so let's move on. Next up, yes, a, a release that came out 2016. A lot of people have already showed this. I've uh, been meaning to grab it all along, but I kind of took my time. I, I, I just picked this up um, um, two weeks ago. I, I did a partial trade in. I traded in some CDs, so I got a little bit. I got quite a bit off the, the end price. But um, that is a moon shaped pool by um, Radiohead. Um, yeah, a lot of people have shown this already, um, and a lot of people have gone into quite a, quite a lot of detail on it. Um, I think uh, Kevin Strange Strange showed us um, it shows it in his most recent video. He he, he has the deluxe edition, but this is the regular black vinyl edition. Um, Super of album. I, I mean, this, as Kevin said, it's not groundbreaking, but um, I think it certainly is. Um, you know. Uh, compared to a lot of the stuff that's coming out um, nowadays, it's certainly you know up there in the in the top five uh, albums of two thousand and sixteen. I think there's a kind of a strong model, modern classical um, uh, kind of a, a vibe running through it. I think there's um, quite a bit of piano. Uh, so yeah, um, definitely if you're if you're a radio head fan, if you if you haven't grabbed it already, then um, we'll certainly go out and, and do so. Now this is something I've picked up at a flea market. Well, kind of. A, well, it, it, it it's not a flea market, as in you know a flea market where you get stuff really cheap. Uh, this guy is a professional seller, but uh, anyway, I got this for an okay price. This is Philip Starr. Oh, it's what am I saying, Philip Starr? This is Philip Glass with an album called North Star. 
this was released in 1977 and it's probably the earliest Philip Glass album that I have that I've picked up to date uh, it's an original UK pressing on Virgin and uh, quite, yeah, quite a different quite a different label there <laughs> uh, than the one shown earlier um, yeah this album I think I think it owes quite a, quite a lot to um, Terry Riley. There's quite a strong Terry Riley uh, feel running through this. There's a lot. There's a lot of organ um, in this kind of electric organ. So um, I think I think it was recorded as a soundtrack to a um, to a, a, t a documentary. I think, um, but uh, yeah. So it's uh, quite a, quite interesting to. Um, um, almost everything by Philip Glass I have, I have is kind of more from the eighties onwards. So it's interesting to get that kind of earlier perspective on his work. Um, this is something that I picked up. Um, okay, again, my local independent record store. Uh, this is a kind of relatively newish release. It came out two years ago, but this was in their bar this was in their kind of reduced section. It was still sealed, um, like still sealed, brand new. But it it had the the price had been reduced by about a third, so I got this for for ten euros. Um, this is Left Field, uh, Left Field's most recent album, Alternative Light Source, uh, which actually came out. Oh, it actually came out last year, two thousand fifteen. Um, you know they did release one of the best albums of the nineties in um, Left Fieldism. Uh, this is, I think this is, I think they're down to one um, single member now. Uh, they were a duo. Um, what's the guy's name again? Just bear with me. Uh, Neil Barnes, I think. But um, yeah, interesting one. There's some guest vocals on here, as 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 they as left field generally tend to to do. Uh, there's um, the guy from the Sleeper of Mods. And on one track, um, what's his name again? Oh, I, I just can't think of his name off. But yeah, this is a pretty good album. Uh, not, not, you know, not up, not up to the same standard as their, as their nineties work, but definitely, um, I thought it was worth grabbing. Uh, in the same store, but this was second hand. Um, this is a band called the Bongos, and this is called Time and the River. Um, mini album released on fetish records in 1982 i didn't know too much about this band but i grabbed this so pretty much solely on account of the fact that cozy fanny tootie of um throbbing gristle is uh, makes an appearance on this album uh playing clarinet so this is kind of uh this post-punk kind of post-punk kind of would have maybe poppy, poppy punk feel, but then in, interspersed with these weird kind of almost free jazz kind of moments. Uh, so it's really a kind of an unusual one. Um, yeah, the bongos, and it's on, at least on a fetish label uh, in 1982. Um, yeah, an interesting one. Um, what else is there? Oh yes, uh, this is something. This is something I picked up just a few days ago. Uh, I originally saw Ben Costello show this, and I've been on the lookout for it since. And the other day, I I picked it up. I, I just happened to come across it in a second-hand record store. And this is um, this is uh, John Sir Sermon and Jack De Jonette. and this is um, ECM, uh, an album called. The Amazing Adventures of Simon Simon. This came out in 1981. Uh, I remember the the cover uh, when Ben showed it originally, and I've been on the lookout for it since. And um, so John Surnham, um, yeah, British, English um, saxophone player. He also plays the um, bass clarinet and synthesizer. And Jack De um as you'll know, um, drummer. So he's on drums and percussion on this. Um, really, really like this album. I, I think this could possibly be my new favourite ECM album. Um, the, the opening track on this is absolutely amazing. Um, first track, The Nestor Saga, The Tale of the Ancient, is just absolutely superb. Uh, I just love the, the synth synthesizer on it. So, um, 
Yeah, so, uh, yeah, and it's in really nice stick as well. Um, the, the Amazing Adventures of Simon Simon, uh, ECM 1981. Um, almost there, almost at the end now. Um, a couple of charity shop finds again. Um, I picked this up just today. Um, Roxy Music, Flesh and Blood. This is one I've been missing. I haven't actually played it yet because I actually literally just picked this up a few hours ago uh, in a in a, tri in a thrift charity shop, whatever you want to call them. Uh, this is on Polydor and this is actually an Irish pressing so it's kind of relatively, would be kind of more scarce than the UK press. Um, so I'll be giving, I'll be spinning that uh, in a while. Um, this is a really interesting album that I found in a charity shop yesterday. Um, this is German uh, medieval music from the um, uh, 12th and 13th centuries. Uh, it's by a, a musical ensemble called um, uh, Baron Gaslin. Uh, it's on a label called Plain, which I sorry, a label called Plain, which I'd never heard of before. It's a German label, and this is. Um, yeah, so it's uh, German medieval folk songs, uh, some of which have a really kind of strangely, almost kind of Eastern feel to them. Um, yeah, this was released in 1980, and uh, it's actually, I, I looked this up online, this actually is quite rare, this album, it goes for quite a bit um, online, so it's a really nice find. Um, uh, yesterday, another charity shop find. Uh, now this is an album that I actually had before, but I gave it away as VCLT to um, a Robin Boston. Um, this is um, uh, the Book of Invasions, uh, Celtic Symphony by Horse Lips. Uh, Horse Lips, um, uh, Irish progressive rock band who kind of fused, you know, prog rock with um, Irish traditional music. This came out in 1976. Uh, this is one of their best albums, and um, I'm glad to have it back in my hands again, because um, uh, this is really is a superb album. Um, so that's, um, yeah, so that's everything. Um, okay, we're at 22 minutes, not too bad, I suppose. I um, hope everybody has a great Christmas, and I know I will, and I'm just going to tuck into some, uh, a great Christmas tradition, some... Um, uh, Cadbury's Roses, uh, 